All right, welcome back. In this video, we're gonna go over the chymotrypsin enzyme mechanism. This video is gonna be part one out of two. First off, thank you so much for the support lately. Got over 150 subscribers in three months. That's more than I ever thought I would get. So thank you so much. And for new viewers, if you like these types of videos, please like and subscribe. I love doing these and if you watch them, and you like and subscribe, that tells me that you guys are loving them too. So I'll keep doing these and, you know, as long as I have support. So let's begin. Chymotrypsin is a protease. A protease is an enzyme that breaks down proteins. So whenever you eat any type of protein, eggs, meat, soy, tofu, anything like that, chymotrypsin is involved. It's a protease. They need, we need some kind of enzymes to break them down in our body. Your pancreas secretes chymotrypsin. Your, your pancreas actually secretes a lot of types of enzymes, and one of them it happens to be chymotrypsin. So chymotrypsin is an enzyme that's very specific in that it can only break down or hydrolyze, it's another word for it, the amino acids tryptophan, leucine, tyrosine, and phenylalanine. Notice that all of these amino acids I just listed have rings in them. So chymotrypsin likes to break down amino acids with rings in it. So what does this mean? So if you were to eat some kind of protein, some nutritional protein something, snack or whatever, and it does not, it's not one of these amino acids I just listed, chymotrypsin cannot do anything. See, the enzyme is very specific in the actions it can do. It can only react with certain substrates, substrates meaning amino acids in this case. Chymotrypsin involves the aspartate 102 amino acid, histidine 57 amino acid, and serine 195. What does this mean? Well, the actual chymotrypsin molecule, the enzyme itself, is made up with these three amino acids. The number after the amino acid, so 102, 57, 195, is just the placement of that specific amino acid in the polypeptide chain. In the protein folding video I made, I mentioned that these, these amino acids in this polypeptide chain like to fold in and fold with each other and interact with each other. So that's why we have 102, 57, and 195. They're huge gaps between these amino acids. It's because they're folding in and interacting with each other and it creates this chymotrypsin enzyme. So these three amino acids form something called the catalytic triad. Just a fancy way of basically saying three amino acids do something. So in this reaction, serine provides the nucleophile, which is the oxygen. So that's gonna be the one doing all the attacking. That's gonna be doing the, all the reactions here. Histidine and aspartate basically just support serine in its efforts to do something and react. I also wanna make note that I'm making this in two parts is because I don't wanna stress you guys out. When I learned this in class, about 95% of the entire class was lost because it is a tricky mechanism. But my job here is to make it really easy for you to understand. And I think the best way to do that is split it up into two videos. Do half of the mechanism in this video and then the other half in the next one. Also, I'm going over chymotrypsin is because this is the most popular mechanism taught in biochemistry class. I do not know why it's chymotrypsin. I have a feeling that the people who, when they develop biochemistry, you know, the syllabus for biochemistry, they put all the different enzymes you could possibly learn on like on a wheel or whatever, and they spun it, you and it landed on chymotrypsin. So that's why we're learning it. I don't, and honestly, I don't know why, but you have to learn about an enzyme and how it works, and I guess they chose chymotrypsin. This figure here is basically the 3D model or the ball and stick model of the chymotrypsin enzyme. Notice it has the aspartate on the left, the histidine in the middle, and the serine on the right. So let's do this. Step one, the first thing you need to do is draw out the amino acids R group, R groups. So 
when drawing amino acids, you usually include the alpha carbon, the, car uh, the carboxyl group, and the amino group, and the hydrogen. Here, we don't need any of that. All we need to do is focus on the R groups, because that's what's going to do in all the interaction. The R groups of aspartate, histidine, and serine are the ones doing all the mechanism, the, all the reactions handled by the R groups. Nothing with the alpha carbon, nothing with that carboxyl group or the amino group we talked about. Okay, so notice what we have here. Actually, let's talk about serine first. I mentioned that serine is going to be doing uh, the attacking here. It's going to be the nucleophil nucleophile that will attack. If you have not taken organic chemistry, nucleophile is just a fancy way, well, well, how I like to say it, it's like, it's like a homing missile. It likes to find a target and attack it, and that's how the reaction continues, is by attacking another molecule. So serine is going to be doing that. If you ever learned in organic chemistry, alcohols are not great nucleophiles. They're not great at, at attacking. They, yes, they can attack, but not, they're not great at it. So that's where histidine and aspartate are going to come. These two amino acids, aspartate 102 and histidine 57, are basically going to be buddies to serine. They're basically going to say, hey serine, I see that you're going to try to attack this protein, this amino acid here, to break it down. I see that you're not strong enough right now, but let me help you guys out. Let me help you out, and I'll, we'll make you stronger. So that's exactly what's going to happen here. So just a note, little note here. I just said that alcohols are not great nucleophiles. So our goal here is we're trying to make an alkoxide. So this is what an alkoxide looks like. So let's start here. Notice the aspartate molecule here. It has a double bonded oxygen and another oxygen without, with a single bond. This makes it negatively charged. So it has one, two, three, four, five, six electrons. It's negatively charged. Now look at the histidine here. The histidine has a partial positive hydrogen here and a partial negative nitrogen here. The reason that this is partially positive is because the nitrogen in the ring is partially negative, slightly negative. It's holding all the electrons. So this hydrogen is partially positively charged. This partially positive charge and this negative charge are going to react. So what's going to happen is, remember how I said that proteins fold? Well, what's going to happen is this histidine it's going to get attracted to this aspartate because of the negatively charged oxygen. So the partially positive hydrogen is going to be attracted to the oxygen. And it's going to line up and basically in that enzyme, in that polypeptide chain, it's going to fold in and kind of align itself so it can bond together. That's what's going to happen. Now here, the nitrogen here is partially negative in the histidine molecule. In the serine molecule, the hydrogen is partially positive because you have a partially negative oxygen. So this partially positive, uh, partially negative nitrogen is going to be attracted to the partially positive hydrogen. So all we're doing here is just lining up the molecules and joining them together. That's all we're doing here. So I purposely did not draw them bonded to, to each other because it's going to seem a little messy. So I just broke it up, but I just showed by dotted lines that they will bond together. But I, I didn't draw them together. That makes sense. Okay, so let's, what's going to happen here now? What's step two? Step two is the nucleophilic attack, or nucleophile attack, I should say nucleophilic, sorry, attack on the carbonyl carbon on our peptide. What's happening here? Okay, so here I mentioned that the partially positive hydrogen that was over here is going to connect with the partially positive nitrogen. So back, let's go back here. These two are going to bond together. So this nitrogen and hydrogen are going to bond together. So that's exactly what we did here. 
That's the first thing. They're bonded together. This leaves our alkoxide ion we've just created. This alkoxide ion, this group we just created, is going to attack the polypeptide of a random protein, a random amino acid. So it could be one of those we talked about here. It could be either tryptophan, leucine, tyrosine, or phenylalanine. Whatever you ate or whatever you consumed, we need to break that down. So if it's any of those amino acids, this alkoxide is going to attack the carbonyl carbon of the peptide. And when that happens, it basically kicks off this double bond and puts it on the oxygen as electrons. So it's going to be negatively charged. You're probably noticing, what, what is this cisal bond here? The cisal bond is just a fancy term of saying a bond about to break. That's it. That's what cisal bond means. It just means that we're going to break this bond in a future step. In the next step, we're going to break that bond. That's what it means. So that's exactly what we're going to do. Okay, there's a lot going on here. We're going to take it really slow. Okay, first thing is, we had those electrons, right, we just created. Right? That double bond broke off, and we added two electrons to the oxygen. This created a tetrahedral intermediate because we had a nucleophile attack from the serine. So this alkoxide joins with this carbon we just attacked. And we create a tetrahedral intermediate. So now with that pi, that pi bond broke, that double bond broke. Now the tetrahedral intermediate is very unstable. So what's going to happen is these electrons are going to go back to the carbon. And the carbon cannot hold those electrons. So what's going, to call it, what's going to happen is it's going to cause this carbon-nitrogen bond here to break. That's the cisal bond we just talked about. And the cisal bond is going to go over to the hydrogen and attack that. And since hydrogen cannot have, can, cannot be, have you know, more than two bonds, the electrons are going to spread to the nitrogen. That's what's happening here. Okay. Now let's talk about what's happening on the top here. This is called the oxyanion hole. What is going on here? Well, we just move these electrons to carbon. This makes this oxygen really unstable. Like it can break apart immediately. So we have something to protect against that. This is called the oxyanion hole. So in this polypeptide chain, we have two nitrogen atoms bonded with hydrogen. So that's an amide group. You have two amide groups. This is located on the active site of the enzyme. So on that chymotrypsin active site, enzyme active site, we have two amide groups. They're just floating around. And they're going to come along and say, hey, we're going to help you stabilize you oxygen just for the time being. So we don't need to break apart. So we're just going to help you stabilize just for a second. So these hydrogens from the amide group are going to come along and basically stabilize this oxygen. And that's called the oxyanion hole. If this wasn't here, this would just break apart. This entire molecule would just break apart and just basically implode. We don't want that to happen. So this, this is why we this oxyanion hole. It's found on the active site of chymotrypsin. It's just floating around over there. And they come along and say, hey, we'll help you out. We see that you're in distress. Let's help you out. So just a little recap here. The cisal bond breaks by attacking the hydrogen on histidine. So this is histidine. So we are, this, is what, this was the cisal bond. And we attacked the hydrogen. And we moved the electrons over to nitrogen. That right there is probably the hardest part of this whole mechanism. So if you understand this, amazing. Okay, now the result, step four. 
So this causes aspartite and histidine to stick together and with the nitrogen bonded to the hydrogen. So this part right here is stuck to the, uh, to the hydrogen right here. So that's what we drew. In addition, we formed an acyl group. So what we're doing here is this oxygen will, will you know, make another pi bond. Right? We're, we're going to make a double bond here. But in the, in the meantime, we're having this oxy anion hole to stabilize it just, you know, as long while this is happening. We need to create that double bond. But before we do that, we need to stabilize this oxygen so it doesn't break apart. And then it can, it's free to make that double bond. So that's what we did. So the oxy anion hole is gone. We don't need it anymore because we've made that double bond between the oxygen and the carbon. And this was part of the serine molecule right there, the alkoxide. So this entire molecule here is called an acyl group. So now we have two things, two different molecules happening. So just to recap here, this is aspartate, this is histidine, and histidine is bonded with that nitrogen, that cisle bond we broke. And then this is the acyl group. This is part of the serine, so this is the serine part of it. And this part is part of the protein that we're trying to break. Now, this nitrogen cannot hold on to this hydrogen efficiently. This nitrogen here is pulling so much on the hydrogen. So what's going to happen is basically it just breaks off. So this hydrogen and the nitrogen, all this part right here just breaks off and it goes bye-bye. So it's gone. Look, it's gone. It just floats away into nothing. It's gone. We don't have to worry about it ever again. So now we're just left with the histidine and the aspartate. And over here, we just have the serine and the, basically, the, the, well, basically the entire acyl group here. This is from the protein and this is from the serine. This concludes part one. I'm going to upload part two probably tomorrow. I did this on purpose so we can just slow down. I want you to really understand that. Hopefully I made this really clear. I tried to make this as clear as possible. This is a really tricky mechanism. I'm not going to lie. It is. So I tried my best to explain it. So hopefully this does make sense and I ease your pain. So, until tomorrow, or whenever I make the video, later.